Now from the Columbia Basin, your local news source, this is iFiber One News, presented in high definition. The number one source for real-time local news, local sports headlines, and our very own weather center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. With your iFiber One News team, reporting news in real time as it's happening. From the iFiber Communications HD Broadcast Studio in Ephrata, Washington, this is iFiber One News, and it starts now. Welcome to iFiber One News. I'm Alan Troop, reporting news from around the Columbia Basin for Wednesday, December 11th. Tonight, we report on the hearing to determine if Nathan Brooks will be charged as an adult and who is leading the election for the Moses Lake Irrigation and Rehabilitation District. In sports, Bob Kirkpatrick reports on how the Warden Cougars did against Granger last night. And our spotlight story tonight is about a Grant County PUD program that helps people share the warmth. And we have the latest weather forecast for the Columbia Basin from the I-501 Weather Center. Our top story tonight, Nathan Brooks returned to court as a two-day hearing began to determine if he will face trial for shooting his parents as an adult or a juvenile. The hearing to determine whether Nathan Brooks will be tried as an adult started today. 15-year-old Moses Lake boy is charged with two counts of attempted murder in the first degree after allegedly shooting his parents in early March. Deputy Prosecutor Kevin McRae argued it would be better for the community and Brooks if he faces adult charges and potentially adult punishment. He pointed out Brooks reportedly invented a story about an intruder before confessing to the crime, faced a previous accusation of molestation, and has an average to above average intelligence. Defense attorney Lillianne Couture argued Brooks has previously undiagnosed mental health issues, such as depression and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Getting the same treatment as an adult would mean Brooks would be more likely to commit another crime when he's released from the adult system. For iFiber One News, this is Cameron Probert reporting. Reporters Cameron Probert and Vivian Huang will continue to cover the hearing for iFiber One News. David Skog is leading Ron Covey after the first round of ballot counting was completed in the Moses Lake Irrigation and Rehabilitation District election. The election was held yesterday to determine who will be the board director for position one and to seat two people in the new board director positions created to expand the board from three to five. People owning land within the district were eligible to vote. For director position one, Skog received 1,034 votes and Covey 486 votes. The election will also determine who will fill the two newly created seats on the board. Four candidates are seeking the position, but only the two candidates with the most votes will be elected. Leading the election for the new positions are Bill Bailey with 711 votes and Jeff Foster with 702 votes. Following, following closely behind is Larry Tracy with 696 votes and Mary Perry with 600 votes. All of the ballots cast yesterday are counted except absentee ballots, which will be tallied on Monday. The impact of absentee votes could change the election outcome as the district voter turnout yesterday was described as being light. The discovery of an illegal fishing operation allegedly started police on a 25-mile chase in northern Grant County. Prosecutors charged Mikhail Mitsevich, a 38-year-old Everett man in Grant County Superior Court, with assault in the second degree attempting to elude a pursuing police vehicle and commercial fishing without a license in the first degree. A Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife officer found trash bags full of 174 white fish and a few others, along with two gill nets at Banks Lake late last week and waited for people to return to the nets. When a gold Chevy Astrovan approached the bags, the fish and wildlife officer ran out from nearby bushes, stood in front of the van and told the people to stop. Mitsovich allegedly drove the van straight at the officer who had to jump out of the way to avoid being hit and led them on a chase for about 25 miles before stopping and being arrested. Each of the people you see here has warrants for their arrest and is wanted by various law enforcement agencies. If you see any of these people, the DOC asks that you not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but to call police. 
You can also call the Department of Corrections at 509-764-6180 during the day or 509-762-1160 after 5 p.m. We will be back after these messages with the latest from our i fiber one weather center, sports, and more news. If it's metal, we buy it at J&K Recycling, from junk cars to farm equipment and everything in between. We are looking to buy industrial and construction equipment, iron and steel, copper, brass or aluminum. We buy scrap metal of any kind. We can come to you to clean up your junk so you don't have to. Give J&K Recycling a call today. Remember, if it's metal, we buy it. Good food, cold beer, and plenty of entertainment. That's what Sporty Steakhouse is all about. Open 6 a.m. every day. We offer over 100 reasonably priced menu items with 24 different ice cold beers on tap and a wide variety of spirits. Come in with your favorite group, watch the game on our big screen TV, shoot pool, play shuffleboard, and more. We have live music and DJs, so find us on Facebook for upcoming events. Located on East Broadway Avenue in Moses Lake. Sporty Steakhouse, where good friends meet. Hi folks, good to be with you once again. I'm meteorologist Miguel Montoya from the One News Weather Center. Your weather forecast is being brought to you by your Bud Clary Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Let's check out the headlines making news across our area. Trending stormy for the remainder of the work week. We'll watch those clouds roll in overnight. A wintry mix along the Columbia Basin between Thursday evening and Friday morning. And although precipitation amounts will remain fairly light, it doesn't take that much to slicken up the roadways. Keep that in mind if you will be traveling on Thursday night or as you head out the door on Friday morning. It was a chilly one this morning once again, 11 to be exact in Afreda, although that's a little misleading. That was actually right around midnight as you headed out the door this morning. Temperatures actually rose into the middle and upper teens. It was only in the upper 20s this afternoon, slightly below normal for this time of year with similar conditions in Moses Lake. It was 8 early this morning. Temperatures made it into the lower 30s. We are in the 20s at the present time. Those clouds continue to thicken. Winds are fairly light out of the south at about five miles per hour or so. So we will continue to watch those clouds roll in. Clouds associated with the storm system spinning in the Gulf of Alaska will throw some rain and snow our way by Thursday morning, especially coastal communities, snow along the Olympic Mountains, and then that will spread through the rest of our state on Thursday afternoon into Thursday evening. It clears the northwestern U.S. by Friday. It leaves us with plenty of clouds. The next storm system will reach our coastline Saturday. It will fall apart before reaching our area. And the one following that on Tuesday will drift by to our north. Once that one clears the region, another shot of Arctic air will move into our state and the western U.S. for the second half of next week. But in the meantime, let's uh, focus on tomorrow. Here's what you can expect 4 p.m. on Thursday. Rain and snow along coastal areas, obviously snow along the higher elevations. Light snow will break out in places like Yakima, also off to our west in places like Wenatchee. And then mixing with some freezing rain and sleet along our area during the second parts of the day, extending into Thursday night and early Friday morning. Temperatures on Thursday will range from the middle and upper 20s to the lower 30s, right around 29 or 29 or so here in Afreda. So once again, we are looking at wintry conditions pretty much from Thursday evening into Friday morning. Otherwise, near normal temperatures over the next handful of days. Some cloudiness around on Saturday and once again on Tuesday, turning sharply colder by the second half of the next week ahead. Well, folks, your weather forecast was brought to you by your Bud Clary Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. As usual, we will be right back with sports. There's something new and exciting happening right now at your nearest Toyota dealer. It's the arrival of the all-new 2014 Corolla. Now featuring a new stylish exterior, plus a premium interior loaded with technology, including Toyota's Entune multimedia system with navigation. Corolla has definitely evolved. The best part is, right now you could take advantage of special introductory savings. The new 2014 Corolla, available at any of your Inland Empire Toyota dealers today. Toyota, let's go places. 
Hi, I'm Chuck Demirler, the new manager at Furniture West. Furniture West has been a part of the Moses Lake community for over 30 years. My team and I have expanded our inventory to meet our customers' needs. We have over 100 recliners in stock. We have a fantastic sleep center with dozens of mattress choices from the best brands in the business. Come see our great kids section with some of the most fun kids' furniture you will find anywhere. We are your source for power reclining furniture. Check out our new selection today at 117 West Broadway Avenue in Moses Lake. Welcome back. I'm Bob Kirkpatrick with today's local sports. Well, there was plenty of Columbia Basin basketball action on tap last night. Here's a look at what happened. The Warden Cougars had a rough outing against Granger at home as both the girls and boys teams dropped their basketball games by wide margins to the Spartans. Poor shooting from the floor, missed free throw attempts, and turnovers were the theme in both contests for Warden. Things looked promising for the Lady Cougars, who took a 16-13 lead at the end of the first quarter. But it was all Spartans after that, as Granger outscored Warden 53-18 the rest of the way to win in a cakewalk. Aliyah Enriquez finished with 12 points for the Cougars. The loss drops Warden to 1-2 and two in the SCAC East standings. The boys' team had trouble with the Granger press all game long in a 53-37 loss to the Spartans. The first half was competitive as Warden trailed 31-23 at the break, but a 22-14 run in the second half sealed the victory for Granger. The loss dropped Warden to 0-3 on the season. Nate Cole was a high scorer for the Cougars with nine points. Warden is back in action Friday when the Cougars travel to Natchez Valley for a game with the Rangers. Jacob Laird knocked down 18 points, and Riley Pheasant and Dylan Betham added 12 each, but it wasn't enough to propel Efreda to a win at home over the East Valley Red Devils in the league opener for both teams. The Tigers trailed 30-28 to at intermission, but were outscored 48-35 in the second half and dropped the contest 78-63. Efreda was down by three points with four minutes to go, but three consecutive buckets from beyond the arc was the Tigers' demise as the Red Devils went on a 23-10 run to close it out. The Lady Tigers lost a hard-fought 43-36 game to the Red Devils despite a 29-9 advantage from the charity stripe. Kendall Sage drained 12 points to lead the way for Efreda. The Tigers are back on the hardwood Friday when Efreda heads to Grandview to match up with the Greyhounds. The Quincy boys team improved to three and one in non-league play with a thrilling 56-55 win on the road over the Waluke Warriors. The Lady Jacks came away with the win as well as they turned back the Lady Warriors 39-28 to move to two and two in non-league action. Both teams open league play Friday in Kashmir. Moses Lake Christian Academy hosted Riverside Christian and it was the Lady Lions coming away with a lopsided 62-28 win on the strength of 21 points from Anna Yarbrough. The boys team dropped its game to the Crusaders 67-18 to fall to 0-2 on, on the season. The Lions are back in action Friday for a home game with the Kittitas Coyotes. Well, that's it for sports. We'll be right back after this. Give your car the bath of a lifetime at Glass House Car and Dog Wash. Our personal attendants will focus on your vehicle's needs, and our new touchless technology guarantees the best wash possible. And as always, our tire scrubbers and rim spray will increase the life of your tires and leave them gleaming. Water spots don't fly here, we will hand dry your vehicle every time. Get in, get out, get clean at the Glass House Car and Dog Wash, located at 914 North Stratford Road in Moses Lake. At High Mountain Hunting Supply, we have a saying that guides us. If we won't use it in the field, we won't sell it in the store. We take that seriously. Every gun, every rod, every bow that we sell is a product you can feel confident will help you land the biggest fish or harvest the biggest game. Our experts will help you find the right product for your needs. Come see us at 12238 North Frontage Road in Moses Lake or 223 North Mission in Wenatchee. High Mountain Hunting Supply, your source for hunting and fishing. Our spotlight story tonight is about a program at the Grant County PUD that allows people to share the warmth during the winter. Reporter Jeff Chu has the story. Winter can put a chill on the pocketbook when it comes to keeping warm, especially in trying economic times. That's why Grant County Public Utility District's Share the Warmth program has been around for 40 years. 
Share the Warmth is a community-sponsored effort through PUD that provides emergency assistance for those who need help with winter electric bills. PUD spokesman Chuck Allen explained what the program is about. Well, Share the Warmth is an opportunity for our customers to help their neighbors uh, who might be struggling, might be having uh, having financial difficulties, and uh, especially during the winter time when uh, with the cold weather, heating bills tend to rise, and families oftentimes have to struggle and decide, are we going to choose between having food or having electricity? PUD customer service representative Debbie Harper said all types of people need the program's help. Some people are dealing with sicknesses, you know, big illnesses that were unplanned. A lot of people have job loss. There's elderly people on fixed income, single parents that have had struggles or change in their lifestyle. How to share the warmth work? Our customers will um, give a donation and you can give a, a one-time donation, like come to one of our local offices and drop off a, a check or, or cash, or you can donate a little bit every time you pay your bill. State law allows the PUD to administer a donation account for Share the Warmth. Allen said there are different ways to make a donation. This allows us to develop a program where they can make, make an easy decision by contributing to Share the Warmth. Okay. And it's a that donation that they make, it's a, it's a, it's a tax-deductible uh, donation. If someone donates $10 or more in a calendar year, they receive a 1099 form that they can deduct on their taxes. While PUD accepts donations, the program is administered through Opportunities Industrial Center in Moses Lake, which determines who qualifies. OIC's phone number is 509-764-8120. Harper shared a story about a Share the Warmth recipient. We have a gentleman, and other people too, but we've had a gentleman that has been helped by the program. And one time he came in and laid down $500 on the counter, and I was really surprised and said, what do you want me to do with this? And he says, you know, I want to put that to Share the Warmth, that I have been helped by them before several times in the past, and I want to return the favor. And he's actually helped other times throughout the year now also. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. We will be right back after this. Bud Clary Ford Honda is proud to be an automotive leader in our area. Since opening our doors over 54 years ago, we have kept a firm commitment to our customers. We offer a wide selection of vehicles and hope to make the car buying experience as quick and hassle-free as possible. You can trust that we will get you into the car or truck of your dreams. Bud Cleary has an experienced and reliable service and parts department that is open extra hours to help fit our customers' hectic schedules. Come for a test drive today at 1200 South Pioneer Way. We are a proud supporter of Columbia Basin Athletics. Well, one thing I knew from being a patient myself was that a dental office is a scary place to come to. And so we wanted everything possible to make sure that our office is a comfortable place for our patients to visit. And the patients that I have, my clients, have made me a part of this community and we want to give back in every way possible. Community Services of Moses Lake recently received a donation of $1,000 from the Lioness Club of Moses Lake. President of the Lioness Club of Moses Lake, Terry Sell, stated, With so many people going through tough times in our area right now, it's nice that the Lioness Club of Moses Lake is able to contribute to a much-needed service in our community. The Lioness Club of Moses Lake is a nonprofit organization that provides scholarships and various local donations. They raise funds at the Spaceburger booth at the Grand County Fairgrounds. In Northwest News tonight, we start with the bad news and move on to something better. For the second year in a row, the Grinch is on patrol in Cheyenne, Wyoming. With his trusty dog, Max, and his radar gun in the hand, he took to the streets yesterday to remind drivers to slow down and drive safely. You see him here waving at them as they pass by. Cheyenne police say calling up the Grinch is all part of an effort to nab speeders and other traffic violators. And it's time to send the children out of the room if they are waiting for Santa at Christmas. The next story is about people who want to be one of 
Santa's helpers. It turns out there's a school for that. Touch it. Don't feel it? Yeah. Touch it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for Cliff Snyder, better known as Cliff Kringle, it never gets old. Good job. Give me five. That's a boy. Christmas may come but once a year, but Snyder's always working to improve his craft. That's all I've worried about, is being the best Santa Claus that I could be. Which is why he and more than 100 fellow St. Nick's ho-ho-hoed their way to Michigan this fall to attend the Harvard of Santa schools. Jingle bells, jingle bells. The Charles Howard School bills itself as the longest continuously running Santa Claus school in the world. We do our best here to, to teach the way we think we're going to help the most Santas and the most children. During their three days here, Santas from all over learn the finer points of makeup application, reindeer maintenance, and much more. Santa Claus is coming. Four-time Santa School attendee Fred Oster's sleigh ride to Michigan originated not far from the North Pole, Norway. They sent us. They have a lot of things to learn. So hang your stockings and say your prayers, because here comes Santa Claus. And another, and another, and another. Mike Householder, Associated Press, Midland, Michigan. Ho, 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 and that's going to do it for us here at iFiber One News. We want to thank you for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow.